Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. After his resurrection, Jesus summons his remaining disciples and commissions them to baptize and teach all nations in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. I must admit that uh, being here for the first time is a bit daunting, but your smiling faces have made it less so. Uh, when Steve called, uh, he wanted to be sure that we could celebrate communion. And so uh, being a retired elder in the United Methodist Church, I can do that. And he wanted it mainly for everyone here because it was such a special time, the Holy Trinity. Now, I know there are no simple explanations to explain the Holy Trinity. Our liturgy today has done as well as can be expected. God's Word does come to us and reminds us of this. The closest I can come to understanding this is because today is Father's Day, that in my relationships with people, I am one person, but to my dad, I am a son. To my children, I am a father. And to my wife, I am a spouse. Three separate roles in my life. Three distinct relationships, but one person. And even that analogy somehow falls short. That's why the Spirit comes to dwell among us and give us instruction as to how we can remind ourselves of God the Father who has brought about all the good that has come in this world, given us organization as such and rules. Now the rules are mainly for those of us who are cantankerous and want to disobey. And we find ourselves in that position a lot, at least I do. But then there are those of us who want to try and do the very best we can, and we stick to those rules without question. And I think that's why Jesus came, because he was saying, you know the letter of the law, but what about the spirit of the law? So Jesus comes in human form, is tempted like we are and chooses not to sin. Faces all of the things that we face and yet goes to the cross for our shortcomings. Is resurrected so that life goes on. Death is not the end, but that there is hope beyond it. And just as those disciples many years ago said, how in the world are we going to carry on without Jesus? How can we see what's going on? He says, I won't leave you comfortless. I'll send the Holy Spirit. Now the reason for this is obviously we could look back and say, Jesus was around all those years ago. How does this affect me in the 21st century? The Bible doesn't tell us about certain aspects in life. Doesn't cover everything in the 21st century. DNA testing. Stem cell research. all sorts of different issues, capital punishment or not. All of these issues we face, and so 
we need someone to help us guide ourselves through all this. Now, some of us may have it all together and have all the issues figured out. At one time, it was said that a person could live in this world and know everything there is to know. And they said that Einstein came closest to it. But I don't think that's true anymore. Einstein's not with us anymore. So we need some guidance. And that's why the Holy Spirit is there. To show us not only this, that Jesus was not just a historical figure, but that Jesus was redeeming us to make us more like the image of God. And as we go through life, we need reminding of what that Spirit of God is all about. The events of life come upon us and we may be tempted to not be Christ-like when someone treats us poorly. Our spirit may not be too kind if someone goes out and corrects our children for playing loudly in their own yard. And the next door neighbor says, your bouncing on the porch is causing my headache. And you say, this is my porch. And we're reminded to love those folks. Perhaps we aren't thinking about that person and what's going on in their life and what are the issues that they face. There may be folks that have lost loved ones and their grief is, is saying, I can't carry them on. And yet, the Spirit of God is with us. Sur surely we miss those loved ones that have come and gone. But we're also reminded of the influence that they've had on our lives, both good and bad so that we might be guided by the Holy Spirit to be more like the Christian example of others. And there are people like you all that are examples of Christian faith to other people that you influence. You may have a large circle of friends. Your circle may be small, but your influence is felt in so many different ways. Whenever I think about the Holy Spirit, I am reminded that listening is one thing that I wish I could do better. I have a hearing aid, but it doesn't work very well. Sometimes I really have to concentrate, and if there's a lot of distractions going on, all I hear is the noise, and I can't focus in on what's being said. Unless I look at the person see their lips working on two senses more than just the one. Try to read their lips. I used to do that when people I thought were telling secrets and I could read lips pretty good when I was a teenager. But now the vision isn't quite as good either. So I sometimes hear things wrong. And don't we all, when we seek to listen to the Holy Spirit, sometimes we say, is that really the Holy Spirit talking to me? Or is it that I am hearing something that I need a hearing aid? I'll tell you, the Holy Spirit is that hearing aid to help us to move to the next step of righteousness. We know that salvation comes from Jesus and His acts. And we know all three personalities or persons of the Godhead have particular functions. There is a sense of justice. There is a sense of being in charge of creation, being good stewards of the earth's resources. Being one who looks at God and evidence of God in so many different areas of life. Some of us have homes that are quote-unquote green in nature. 
may have houses that have special environmental help in making our world less polluted. That's a part of being a caretaker of God's creation. But I think more than anything, it's the spirit with which we deal with God's creation. No one will miss that litter I'm tossing out. Some people will even be so crass as to say, well, that gives those people that are on probation something to do. I think that's rationalizing a bit and not saying truly what the Spirit of God is about. Perhaps community service could be better held if there was something rather than trash being picked up. So where do we fit? We fit as God's fine creation, his most noble of all creation. Though we don't always act that way, by Jesus Christ's acts and his resurrection, we have power to overcome where we were and the sin that we faced. And that spirit continues to guide us to continue in righteousness, to be that witness for someone else. And as the scripture says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, not to lord over someone, but power to do the right thing in very tough situations. Power to love when it's so much easier to dislike. Power to care when the world doesn't seem to care. Power to look at all three parts of the Godhead and realize all this is wrapped into one. One for us, because God loves us so much. So today we celebrate all three parts. We celebrate all the relationships we have with God, that one God. And because of that love, that first commandment should be easy to keep. It says, remember, you shall have no other gods before me. It's so hard. But that's why we have three persons that God has blessed us with. Help us to be a blessing so that in the days that lie ahead, Folks will look and see all three aspects of God in you and me. It's not easy. Who said it would be? But we have in God one who can mold us and make us into what he would have us be. Let us be pliable. Let us have a hearing aid. And let us look and focus on those things that are Godlike and Christlike. Amen. Now we stand and sing the hymn of the day. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.